So, another video from me. And no, before you ask, uh, both CC and Lewis are still with us. No, they haven't been fired. The only reason I'm doing it by myself is because they're both very busy and uh, I needed to do a bunch more videos before I head out to my um, uh, next trip. So, uh, it's just me today, me and my ugly mug, and Mike behind the camera who's not looking at me, and Tristan who's monitoring the audio. What am I going to talk about today? Something called sibling rivalry. Um, our, my last video I did was between the Cayenne CS55 integrated amp and the uh, AudioNote i0. And I've been wanting to actually compare both the i0 uh, AudioNote as well as its uh, older brother, the bigger brother, the uh, Cobra. So I thought, let me just do that now. Um, here are some interesting specs. The i0 is four thousand five hundred dollars. The Cobra is eight thousand dollars. These are Canadian dollars, by the way. The i0 is eight watts per channel. The Cobra is twenty-eight watts per channel. The uh, i0 uses four ECL eighty-two tubes, whereas the uh, Cobra uses four EL thirty-fours. The i0 has no remote. The Cobra has a remote. The i0 has no DAC. The Cobra has a built-in DAC. So on paper, it's a very lopsided comparison between the i0 and the Cobra. Um, I'm using the MoFi Source Point 10, which is um, rated at 8 ohms, uh, impedance with a 6.2 minimum, so it's easy to drive, and 91 dB sensitivity. It's actually one of the reasons I picked up the uh, MoFi, because um, we love the audio node electronics so much, and, and so, so much of the audio node amplifiers have very low power. I wanted to make sure that there was an alternative speaker that would be reasonably affordable in case someone did not want the uh, audio node speakers. All right, so let me get to it. When I hooked up the i0 to the uh, MoFi speakers and then started playing it, it blew my mind. It, it was a beautiful match. Now, I, I want to hear the AudioNote K speakers and then make a final uh, decision about it, but this was a really good match. The... Uh, um, the speakers, for those of you who don't know, uh, the boys will link um, uh, uh, will link to the video that we did to it. Uses a big 10-inch woofer with um, concentric tweeter in the middle. So with this big woofer, you can get some substantial bass, and it really does produce bass, even with the i0 at 8 watts. I got some uh, room-filling bass, playing it at pretty loud levels. Um, I was playing all kinds of music from basic vocals to rap, to uh, large orchestral pieces. Let me give you some examples of what I was uh, using. Um, I played June Christie, Something Cool, and it sounded like she was right in the room. It, it, was, it was eerie. It was uh, almost scary that uh, this recording done, you know, 50 years or so ago would be so great. Then I played Ryan Adams' Oh My Sweet Carolina live at Carnegie Hall, and it sounds like you're right there on the stage. All the uh, little nuances that he does when he plays his guitar, the way he sings, the audience uh, noise in the background uh, in front of him, you can hear all of it so clearly, but more than that, you are musically involved. You are, you are engaged with the music itself. Um, then I decided to play something much more... Um, difficult, shall we say. Billie Eilish, uh, Wish You Were Gay. Um, from the very first note, you, you got some serious, uh, you got some wonderful dynamics, uh, great studio production, bass was shaking the walls. This, remember, is 8 watts. And I was playing it loud. Um, and then I decided to try some uh, um, uh, R&B uh, uh, rap, uh, Taste by Tyga. I had to play this before anybody came in because the uh, lyrics, uh, shall we say, are uh, not politically correct. But I had a great time just listening to it. It was just a wonderful recording. Um, then I, try, I decided, let me try the Cobra. So hooked up the Cobra, same system, and instantly richer, much more powerful, solid, palpable, effortless bass. Um, mid-range was thicker, warmer, definitely. You still heard all the details, uh, but it was definitely a darker sound, not quite as airy sounding as the i0. Now, I was thinking about this, and I wonder if maybe the sense of airiness or more light sound, if you will, 
with the I zeros due to the fact that it doesn't have quite as much bass and harmonics of the bass. Uh, but regardless, it definitely sounds more dark, uh, not quite as open, not quite as airy. Um, having said that, extremely enjoyable. Pulled me right into the music. I, I, I started to play much less, uh, shall we say, well-recorded music, uh, Some, in some cases very bright, um, and it, it, it was still very easy to enjoy. Uh, you were uh, powerless in many ways in, in, in being pulled into the music. So long as the music, as I always say, is really uh, good, music that you like, uh, that is well-played and, and done with passion and inspiration, uh, you will get involved. It it just was uh, truly shocking. Um, parenthetically, the Cobra with the audio node ED speakers, better. There is a magical synergy between the audio node uh, electronics and the speakers that I don't quite get with the uh, Source Point 10. But regardless, it is still an incredible, uh, incredible system. Um, let me uh, very quickly talk about this particular piece of music because it's kind of appropriate. Um, I was telling the guys a few days ago about my uh, enjoying Mahler Symphony Number no. Five, and there's a, a, a section called the Adagio, Adagietto. Um, many of you may or may not know, but Mahler. Uh, I discovered Mahler when I was about my early 20s. At the time, I was um, really enjoying a lot of symphonic music and mostly uh, the standard fairs, you know, the the, um, uh, um, the Beethovens, the Mozarts, and so on, and of course, Rachmaninoff. And then I happened across Mahler, and at first, I didn't quite enjoy it because Mahler is sort of a bridge between the romantic and the modern, and so there's a lot of dissonance. There's a lot of... Um, notes, if you will, that don't follow the same kind of symphonic structure that I'm used to. Um, but as I listened through his repertoire, his, his uh, music, I, I came across the Adagietto and I fell in love with it. Mala was the second of uh, 14 siblings, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, 14 children. And he had a lot of sorrow and pain in his life. As a young boy, he saw six of, six of his uh, siblings die at infancy. So imagine going through that and seeing your brothers and sisters pass away uh, at a very young, early age. Um, he was also um, subject to a lot of anti-Semitism. In fact, um, he rose to um, the director of Vienna Court Opera, only after he converted to Catholicism. An interesting story, when he was five, uh, his father brought him into the woods, um, apparently for a walk or something, and then left him sitting on a tree stump while he went to do something else and completely forgot about him. Uh, four or five hours later, he comes back and Mala is still sitting on the tree stump and apparently he was listening and memorizing and remembering all the, all the uh, sounds of the woods. If you listen to some of his symphony, you will hear a lot of the kinds of music that evoke the sounds of uh, trees, of birds, of uh, noises in the woods, and in fact also of streets. Um... He met his, uh, he met Alma many years later and fell in love with her. He wrote this adagietto as a love letter to her, sent it to her. And Alma was also a very accomplished musician. So when she saw the music, she fell in love with him and said, okay, I'll marry you. At least that's the way the story goes. Um, the Adagietto is one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard. If you haven't heard it, I'll see if the guys can um, put a link uh, or even play a small sample of it in this video so you'll understand what I'm talking about. It has this beautiful soaring melody counterpointed with uh, dissonance, with um, ambiguity, with tension. I, I don't know how to describe it. If you hear it, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, it causes you as as it as it hits certain notes and you are expecting to for the progression to continue it suddenly backtracks or goes off to a minor or to a seventh um it 
is unpredictable, and yet at the same time, it is what you expect it to be. Um, again, paradoxical, but you have to hear it. Um, when you play it, the the tempo that um, Mala intended for it to be, it is like a love a love letter. It's absolutely beautiful, but if you slow down the tempo. It sounds like a piece of music that has been used many, many times in funerals. As a matter of fact, uh, a quick story, Leonard Bernstein, uh, when, when uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy was killed during his uh, funeral, um, Leonard Bernstein led the uh, New York Philharmonic and played this piece of music. And it was so moving, apparently, that um, Jacqueline Kennedy wrote to Bernstein thanking him for the performance, and this is a, an excerpt of the letter. When your mala started to fill, but that is the wrong word because it was more the sensitive trembling. I thought it was the most beautiful music I had ever heard. I'm so glad I didn't know it. It was the strange music of all the gods who were crying. And then, if only you could have seen it, it was the time when Ethel had thought of the most touching thing, having the littlest nephews and nieces, small children, before that terrifying array of cardinals and gold and gothic vaults carry all the little vessels for communion up to the high altar so that they could have some part in the farewell to the uncle they all loved so much. They were so vulnerable, and your music was everything in my heart of peace and pain and such drowning beauty. You could just close your eyes and be lost in it forever. Interestingly enough, Leonard Bernstein led the same orchestra at the funeral of President John F. Kennedy five years earlier. So it comes back full circle to this idea of siblings. The simplest way I can sum up the combination or the, the performance between the two, the cobra is this massive giant of a performer. It has consistently uh, exceeded my expectations as a tube integrated amplifier, even though it's quote unquote only 24, uh, 24 or 28 watts, but it sounds bigger than life. It sounds beautiful. Most importantly, it makes music. It, it, it trembles your heart. The I Zero does very, very similar, beautiful, magical things, but in a more lighthearted way, in a lighter way, and in some ways, I like it better. I'm looking forward to the uh, more expensive audio notes to see what they do now compared to the Cobra. In any case, this is uh, Adrian from Audio Excellence. Just wanted to give you a quick video and share this with you. And if you like it, please subscribe, turn on notification, and uh, please leave your comments below. I love reading them. And if you've heard these before, I'd love to hear what you thought. Anyway, thanks very much. We'll see you another time. Bye-bye.